So hello and welcome to another Buddy Iceberg chart video. Now I did a video on this in 2022 and that video seemed to have been very well received so I thought I might as well do a secondary one on a different iceberg. Now even though most of the entries on this new iceberg are completely brand new, some of them I already covered on the old video so ones that are featured on the old one I'm not going to recover in this video. So with that out of the way let's just get straight onto it with tier 1. And starting us off is Buddy Scholarship Edition and Anniversary Edition. Now these two are just remasters of the original PS2 version. Scholarship Edition is just a remaster of PS2 and Anniversary Edition is a remaster of the remaster. GTA without guns. So when Buddy was first announced many people assumed that Buddy was just going to be GTA in a school basically. Because you know every single sandbox game in existence has to be Grand Theft Auto. Buddy, it's GTA in a school. Red Dead Redemption, it's just GTA set in the Wild West. Simpsons Hit and Run, GTA for kids. Saints Row, GTA for those who want a gangster theme. Watch Dogs, GTA if the cast was full of hipsters and full of people like Lester Crest. Jack Thompson's Lawsuit So very close to Buddy's release, Jack Thompson tried to get Buddy banned by taking Take Two to court. And the judge himself actually played through Buddy and ultimately ruled there was nothing in Buddy that was any worse than what you see on late night TV and ultimately ruled that Buddy would not be banned at all. And Jack Thompson didn't take the news well because he tried to make claims that Take 2 sent in an altered copy of the game where the most violent part of it was conveniently cut out. As you can probably guess, he still lost the case. And in fact he actually ended up getting into a lot of trouble for his behaviour because he also sent out a rather threatening letter. The Rubber Band Ball so the rubber band ball is one of the rewards you can unlock in the game which is obtained after getting all 75 rubber bands scattered throughout the map. The reward is a weapon which lets you unleash utter chaos with the ball as it will just bounce off the walls and knock down anybody in its path. To be fair it is actually a very funny reward. Detention. So unlike GTA getting busted in body actually punishes the player appropriately because instead of just respawning outside the nearest police station with all your weapons taken away, well Buddy's version does that as well. But for every three times you get busted, the next time it happens on school grounds, you're forced to do a mini game where you mow the lawn. Now this mini game is unescapable and you cannot fail it whatsoever, as you will have to do it until it's completed. But the thing with this is the more times you get busted, the more it punishes you, by increasing the minimum amount needed to actually pass and also changing up the location. As it does start off rather small with you mowing the lawn to Harrington House, and on the highest level you end up mowing about 90% of the football field. Although if you do all 9 levels of this you do unlock a prison outfit which doesn't even count towards 100% completion. At least you get something for it though. Spelling swears in English too. So in the second English class Jimmy can spell out a certain swear word using the letters I, H, T and S. I'm sure you can arrange them for yourself. But anyway, if you put this in as an answer it generates a very unique response from Mr Galloway instead of the usual wrong answer message. <laughs> well. I'll let this one slide, James, since I don't want to stifle your creative spirit. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid I can't allow that. Well, you're a feisty one, aren't you, James? Buddy references in other Rockstar games. So, ever since Buddy's release, it's had its fair share of references in other Rockstar releases since then. In GTA 4, you can see Borf Academy on the in-game TV show called I'm Rich. In GTA 5, the Prefects theme makes an appearance on an in-game advert. Give the 99% what they really deserve. Avarice. Something to aspire to. The new Serrano. Luxury reassert. You can also hear another theme from Buddy by dialing a very specific number. An NPC can be seen by the name Hopkins on their shirt. And around the Vinewood Studios area, you can see a billboard for Sequel 2, which can be seen in Borfail Cinema, which is named Sequel the Movie. Likewise, in G Town Line, for the Casino Penthouse, you can buy a Canis Canum Edit portrait, which features the iconic fist, snake, rat, and school logo, although it's in a completely different colour scheme for whatever reason. In Red Dead Redemption 2, you can obtain a gun from a specific side quest, which has Canis Canum Edit engraved onto it which is both Buddy PS2's European name, alongside being the motto of Borf Academy. Also, there's an NPC in Red Dead 2 who shares a very shockingly close resemblance to Jimmy Hopkins and even performs a humiliation animation from Buddy anyway. And finally, there's an achievement called End the Summer, 
when you complete the game, which is a reference to Buddy's Chapter 6. Fighting Pirate Vance So one of Buddy's secrets is a hidden pirate. In Chapter 2 onwards, if you swim out to sea, you'll eventually come across a sunken ship. Now, on the island nearby, if you go there, you can fight a secret pirate, who is actually Vance Medici, a greaser. Now, during Halloween, he can be found wandering the grounds of Bullworth in this costume. Anyway, upon arriving on the island, he will attack on sight with an indestructible weapon, but when he's knocked out, Jimmy unlocks a pirate hat to wear. It's as simple as that. And finally, for the first tier, we have a... Hitler picture. Now, there's portraits of unknown men scattered around certain places in the academy. Dr. Crabble Snitch's office, the boys' dorm, the library to name some, you get the point. And many people have noted that one of the portraits resembles a man who looks a bit like Adolf Hitler. Of course, it's very, 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 very unlikely this man is Adolf Hitler. The real identity of this man is currently unknown, but if I had to guess, it's probably some figure in buddy lore who has something to do with the Academy or Bullworth itself. So, on to the second tier, and we begin with Swegter, The Nathan NS, and Deadpool XYZ. Now, us three are some of the most prominent content creators whose content is solely focused around Buddy. Now, this one to me is also quite funny because it's also missing another prominent Buddy YouTuber, Simon Bestia. Beta character design and cartoony beta animations. Now, during its earliest phases, Buddy was going to be much, much more cartoony in its visual design, including much more exaggerated models and animations. Now, this was done during the earliest part of Buddy's creation because they wanted Buddy to be, as they put it, seen from a child's point of view. But they eventually toned it down as they didn't want it to look like it was a Saturday morning cartoon. The exaggerated designs from the concept seemed to be toned down quite a bit, but still pretty out there, even by Buddy's mid-development, with renders of characters like Melvin, Peanut and Edna still keeping a slightly more wild design. With characters like Melvin looking a bit less human, Peanut's pompadour being comedically massive, and Edna being shorter and fatter. Now, these were toned down even more for the final version, but the exaggerated design to the characters can still be seen on Buddy's comic style artwork. Believe it or not, the comic artwork you see on the loading screens is actually concept art. They just reused it for whatever reason. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Femboy. Now, this line is uttered by Gary Smith during the Welcome to Bullworth mission when Gary walks in on Pete welcoming Jimmy to the Academy. Honestly, enough about me? Oh, I see you've met the dorm's mascot. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Femboy, the girliest boy in school. Gary Smith is a werewolf, so much like the GTA San Andreas Bigfoot myth, many fake claims made their way around the internet forums and various school playgrounds on how to meet this werewolf. And one of these was that Gary Smith is a werewolf. And the only reason people say that is because of the scar that Gary Smith has on his eye, which apparently is identical to the scar seen on the werewolf mask that Jimmy unlocks. But there's two big things that completely debunk this theory. One, Gary's scar is shorter, and two, it's on the opposite eye. The boys dorm second floor. Now this is arguably one of the most infamous and most well documented bits of cut buddy content, as there's a plethora of cut content surrounding this, including textures, pre-release screenshots, no clipping, removed entrances, and much, much more. I would go over all of it here, but um, I don't think you want to hear eight hours of this. Plus I probably already have a video on it anyway. Sid and the punks. So during buddy's development, there were plans for there to be a punk click and it's very highly assumed that the punks were split between the buddies and the townies. Given in that what we know, these being a few concepts for buddy, showed these punks in a very similar style to the townies, but wearing a school uniform, which obviously they don't in the final version. Alongside the fact that Russell himself appears to be the leader of the punks, as shown in buddy's comic that was included in the instruction booklet, and the fact that for whatever reason, Russell is also listed as the townie leader, even though we all know that belongs to Edgar Munson. Now, not much else is known about the punks except for the character Sid, who has been completely deleted from the game, but he still has an in-game render model. Not any in-game models or anything like that, just in-game renders that were found on a Rockstar developer's portfolio. He even appears in one of these renders, staring down Johnny Vincent. Now, many assume that Sid was an early version of Jimmy, but as shown by the Buddy Limited Edition comic, Sid and Jimmy do appear as two separate people. Gay Kissing so one of Buddy's optional features is they let Jimmy kiss boys alongside girls. Every click has one boy Jimmy can kiss, and while it doesn't add or take anything away from the story, the boy Jimmy kisses will always keep 100% respect with him, even in Chapter 5 when everyone hates him. There's also an achievement on the Xbox version of Buddy to kiss 25 boys anyway. Believe it or not, well actually I guess you can believe it, this was actually a rather controversial feature at the time. Let's not get into that debate, on to the next one. Jimmy in GTA 4. So when GTA 4 released, there was actually a rumour that you could see, or do a mission for, or kill, depending on what rumour you heard, Jimmy Hopkins, with this photo being the only proof. 
However, this was debunked. As it turned out, it was just an NPC with a similar outfit. It also turned out this specific NPC was black, but the quality of the phone picture makes him look whiter. But it still didn't stop people making rumours of a mission in GTA 4 where Nico finds Jimmy and helps him out and, and this mission would act as a bit of an epilogue to Bully, where Jimmy would sort of go over the fates, I guess you could say, of some of the bigger cast in Bully, like Russell, Zoe and whatnot. It all turned out to be complete crap, as you can guess, but... You know, this is what it was like in the late 2000s and early 10s, people just making up rumours left, right and centre about whatever. The beta UI. So one of Buddy's earliest known screenshots was discovered on a developer's portfolio, named David Byron, and it showcases off a lot of Buddy's beta interface, including a much different HUD, a completely non-existent mission failure screen that lets a player restart or not. Now keep in mind this feature would actually make its debut in the first Red Dead Redemption, alongside the beta start screen and pause menu. This is currently the closest thing to beta gameplay we have because it shows off a completely different Bully to what we know of. Bully 2 leaks, the third cancellation and the concept arts. Despite never being confirmed by Rockstar Games themselves, Bully 2 is pretty much an open secret at this point. Numerous former employees of Rockstar have came forward with loads of information about it. You know, such as what the story would contain, the gameplay elements, and you get the point. Alongside, many concept artworks have surfaced as well. Now, Bully 2 has been in development and cancelled at least three different times. The first one being in 2008, and by this I mean the development, not any of the leaks, where it actually began development shortly after the release of Bully Scholarship Edition, and it was going to be made by Rockstar New England. But was eventually stopped around 2010-ish because Rockstar needed a lot of help on Red Dead Redemption and Max Payne 3. The second time Bully 2 was in development was around 2013, where the project died down due to a lot of creative differences and clashes, and the third time was just stated to have been cancelled around 2017. In fact, this one ties heavily into another entry, so I'm going to cover this one here, which is Rockstar was meant to tease Bully 2 in 2017. Now, this one actually stems from a theory which was made by, um, well, me in 2021. I swear I'm not just putting this one in to promote myself, this is actually on the iceberg. Anyway, my theory originates from how Rockstar was celebrating Bully's 10th anniversary in 2016 and they were bringing Bully back into the spotlight, by not only bringing it to mobile like they did with the GTAs, but they were also bringing out merchandise for it, an entire decade after the game came out, for a mobile re-release. Alongside bringing it to Xbox One and PS4, before the much more popular and much more demanded GTA 4 even did, for Xbox at least, I know for a fact GTA 4 isn't on PS4, and probably never will be, and Rockstar were even promoting loads of Bully fan art and custom made GTA Online jobs well into the first quarter of 2017. Plus, very coincidentally, straight after Rockstar's Bully posting on Twitter started calming down, that is when Bully 2 artwork got leaked, and neither Rockstar or Take 2 have ever taken any action against anybody sharing these, which is unlike what they did for GTA 6, where I don't know if you remember it, some of you do, some of you may not, but when GTA 6 got leaked, Take 2 went into that much of a damage control they eventually ended up striking channels that just had GTA 6 in the name because they didn't have time to check if the channels had any footage or not. But for the Buddy 2 leaks, nobody ever got a copyright strike for it. Now this made me believe that Rockstar were getting everybody hyped up for Buddy again by bringing it to the newer platforms and engaging in a tactic known as controlled leaks, where months before something gets announced, the company leaks something under a rogue employee or or an accidental listing or something like that. Another reason why I had this theory was because of how similar it was to Red Dead Redemption 2. Because before Red Dead Redemption 2 got announced, Rockstar suddenly started posting about the first Red Dead again. They bought it to the Xbox One. And funnily enough, the entire map and an in-game screenshot from the Black Bells cabin got leaked. And a few months later, Red Dead Redemption 2 got announced. Notable community member Tezfunds2 even stated that Bully 2 was dropped again in 2017, which to me seems way too coincidental, you know. Start posting about Bully again, getting everybody excited for it, leak the Bully 2 stuff, wait a couple of months, Bully 2 gets announced. That was my initial theory anyway. So now we arrive at the third tier, and we're going to start the third tier off with a bit of a triple one because, well, it's the seventh chapter, final showdown, and Gary Smith was going to die. Now, all three of these are pretty interlinked with each other, so I'm going to cover them all in one sort of go, if that makes sense. Anyway, Buddy was going to have seven chapters initially, with chapter five ending with making a mark, which, as you know, is the first mission in chapter five, but during development, it was actually the last. In fact, the ending cutscene to this mission, you know, where Jimmy returns and Pete tells him everybody's looking for a fight, was supposed to lead into complete mayhem. And chapter six was actually going to begin with Jimmy getting expelled. 
However, it was merged with Chapter 6 because, well, Chapter 6 was initially just Complete Mayhem and Final Showdown. So, it was merged because it was just way too short to be its own thing. Likewise, Chapter 7 still exists in the game's files, and can be easily accessed, believe it or not. Because if you use a mod that changes the season, like Super Mod for example, and force the season to become Summer, the pause menu even changes the title to say Chapter 7 Summer. In this version of Chapter 7 there are no beta missions or anything, but there were going to be at least 3 main missions planned. Now all of these were completely cut entirely, as the only remains are 3 leftovers. Well, I say 3, it's more or less like 2, because only the first and third mission marker still remain in the game's files, the second one is completely gone. The first mission marker, 7 underscore 01, was going to be at the pier near Jimmy's Beach Club safe house, and 7 underscore 03 was actually going to be in the Ball of Fail Cemetery. It's unknown where the second one is, but um, yeah, some people believe that the third one might have involved Gary Smith's death or something like that. Now some believe that this is a hint to Gary Smith dying, while others believe that maybe the ending to chapter 6 was going to be a bit different initially, like maybe Gary got away or whatever, while others think maybe chapter 7 might have been an epilogue kind of thing, you know like the Red Dead Redemption series has. But we don't know. But what we do know is Final Showdown did have multiple versions, and this is another bit of evidence I guess you can say, supporting the Gary Smith dies theory. Because initially, this was brought to light in the very early 2010s, this was way before bully data mining was even possible, when a prominent user by the name of Madman claimed he knew a Rockstar Vancouver insider, and they told him that one of the initial endings to bully was Gary Smith was going to die, and Final Showdown went through multiple revisions. And as you could probably guess, many people brushed this off as complete and utter nonsense. Many people thought this sounded a bit too dark for Bully, but this is a game centred around school life, where the worst thing you can really do is throw eggs at people. Well, not the worst thing you can do, you can beat the shit out of all people. But you get the point, it's nowhere near as bad as Grand Theft Auto and the violence department. But, a few years down the line, when data mining started becoming more possible, they discovered he might have been right, because in the game's files, there are six tracks for Final Showdown. And these six files kind of hint that Final Showdown went through at least three different revisions. I say that because in the game's files, there's only two versions of the Final Showdown track. The one that you would expect to actually be the official Final Showdown theme was actually reused for the Rats in the Library mission. However, the one that is actually used in the final game is called Final Showdown 03. Final Showdown 02 does not exist anywhere at all. So that tells us that Final Showdown went through at least three different revisions before the final version was decided upon. Now what's that got to do with Gary Smith dying? Well, as you know, if you're into Buddy Beta, or you've seen the first iceberg or whatever, you know Buddy was going to be a much, much darker game anyway. But as of now, the Gary Smith dying ending has not been confirmed, only the Final Showdown having multiple versions has been. Jimmy's old voice actor. So as with many changes during development, Jimmy wasn't voiced by Jerry Rosenfall. And there's actually a handful of audios from Jimmy's original voice actor that can still be heard in the game's files. Alright, I guess I better get changed. <laughs> help! Help! Oh, help! That's pretty much all of them. And if you're wondering who this is, this is actually the voice of Daniel Zaychik, who actually voiced Jimmy before getting replaced, because they felt his voice didn't fit Jimmy well enough but he still provided the motion capture for Jimmy in the cutscenes. Bob in the gym is burning. Now Bob is a deleted character from Bully, who despite being deleted, still makes an in-game appearance during the mission The Gym's Burning, where he even has a speaking role. Despite the fact, he's a deleted character. Now if he is modded back into the game, he also has an entirely different voice and hangs around with the Bullies, despite the fact early screenshots also show him as a jock. You're a pig! You ruined my life! I'll absolutely maul him and make sure he's so incapacitated! I can't believe this stupid crap! Softlocked in Happy Vaults Asylum. So in Chapter 4, Happy Vaults Asylum becomes available to explore via the tunnels near Ernest Observatory. And for some strange reason, if you enter the asylum, get spotted but run into the open cell in the A block, the cell door will shut behind Jimmy for some unknown reason. Now, if you manage to knock out the Asylum orderly, Jimmy is completely softlocked here because there is no way at all to escape this cell. It's like something out of a creepypasta in a way. Now, for some reason as well, this kind of patches itself after you beat the mission Finding Johnny Vincent. 
I don't know why that is, but yeah, you can't do this after finding Johnny Vincent, but you can do it any time before when Jimmy gets locked inside the cell. Gregory. Now like Bob, and I guess this ties into the asylum aspect, Gregory is also a deleted character, but also appears in the game. About three times in fact. Now Gregory is an asylum orderly, who makes appearances in both asylum related missions, these being finding Johnny Vincent and Galloway away, and even gives Jimmy an errand. But he's completely erased from free mode for some really strange reasons, despite the fact he is very clearly a finished character. So because of his deletion, the asylum is patrolled by many clones of Theo instead. If he is modded back in the game, he blends in perfectly well into the world of Bullworth, so it's really unknown why he was deleted to begin with. The Super Spud Gun and the Flashlight. Now these two are just two completely unused weapons which can be modded back into Jimmy's inventory. The Super Spud Gun is pretty much a one for one copy of the regular Spud Gun, but it has a completely different model and lacks a hood icon. It's probable that this was going to be an upgraded version of the Super Spud Gun somewhat. Some people assume this might have been a bit of a fully automatic version of the Spud Gun, a bit like the Spud Cannon or more like a Spaz 12 shotgun. Likewise the flashlight, it's not really a weapon per se because it still is seen on prefects and if it's equipped by Jimmy, he can't really use it. You can look up and down and shine it at people but that's it. Nothing else happens, it was never meant to be equipped by Jimmy at all. Snow shoveling detention. So if you get forced to do detention during chapter 3, instead of mowing the lawn, Jimmy is instead forced to do snow shoveling in the parking lot instead. Surprisingly Rockstar added 6 levels to this minigame which is actually close to the 9 levels we get for the lawn mowing anyway. Now once chapter 3 is over, snow shoveling can never ever be done again. Some cut files also hint that this might have been a job at some point, but was likely scrapped because, you know, chapter 3 exclusive, and may have locked the player out of 100% completion. Rain and Umbrellas. So Bully is definitely Rockstar's weakest game in terms of its weather variety, as excluding chapter 3, it very, very rarely has a weather change. It's pretty much sunny and dry all day, every day. There's a very, very rare chance it might rain, but when it does rain, you can see students pull out umbrellas. And if Jimmy equips an umbrella for himself, you'll also find it's completely indestructible. You can use this to smack up as many people as you like and it will never break. Likewise, if you stand still and press the fire button, Jimmy opens and closes the umbrella. It's a nice bit of attention to detail. The original context for that's disgusting. So, in Hattrick vs Galloway, many players got confused as to why Edna says You! What are you doing? That's disgusting! when Jimmy collects a bowl from the cafeteria. Well, this line is a bit misattributed, because Edna was supposed to catch Jimmy pissing in the drinks cooler during the big game. So, another nice bit of attention to detail here, but in Chapter 3, if Jimmy wears more summer-like clothing, you know, like t-shirts, shorts or whatever, and you just stand completely still outside in the snow, he'll start to shiver and lose a bit of health when this happens. It's not exactly like it is in Red Dead Redemption 2, but keep in mind this was a PS2 title, so it is actually pretty impressive. Jimmy, Gary and Pete all arrived on the same day. Now the title speaks for itself and this is very unlikely to be true, as when Jimmy arrives it's clear the school season has already started some time ago, everyone already has their rooms, is in full uniform and well acquainted with their friend group for the year or whatever. Plus there's an active election going on as well. So it's not exactly something that would happen if everybody was just starting the academy at the same time. Plus canonically, a few days after Jimmy's arrival, it's Halloween anyway. The mermaid uses Lola's topless model. So when data miners were extracting the models to bully, they noticed the torso to the mermaid from the carnival was listed as underscore Lola underscore UW underscore body. Now, two things. First of all, in the beta of Bully, all of the girls had appearances of them in their underwear, which was later changed to become pyjama models to avoid getting banned for pretty obvious reasons. Now, another thing, in Bully, all of the models have abbreviations to sort of help identify what they are used for. For example, underscore ween is used for the Halloween appearances, underscore w for winter, underscore ch for cheerleader, you get the point. Now the pyjama models are abbreviated with underscore uw, obviously meaning underwear. Now the fact that the topless part of the model still keeps Lola's original underwear file name, it does imply that he likely reused it for her, but it does raise a hell of a lot of questions about why she's topless anyway. The model, I mean, not the mermaid itself. So is this an edited Lola model, or was Lola actually going to be topless during the beta? Either way, it's a very questionable and dodgy thing. I feel like Chris Hansen would be very interested in a visit down Rocks of Vancouver studio because you have to question what the actual f- 
but um, on to the next one which is BMX tricks and customization. So Jimmy initially had the opportunity to perform all kinds of BMX tricks in Buddy, including stuff like tail whips and bar spins, I'll let this footage speak for itself. Now this was found by Deadpool XYZ and can probably be modded back into the game. Likewise Jimmy also had the option to customise his bikes at Shiny Bikes, akin to how you can upgrade cars in the GTA series, as seen by some very early screenshots. Now this area can still be seen in the store itself. It can be seen, keep in mind, but not usable because it's all very... Well, low quality model kind of stuff, you know. In fact, it's not even solid. As soon as you try to disable no clip, you're just going to fall through the floor and die. Unseen characters. So, there's a lot of characters that appear by name only, be it by character mentions, graffiti, or debris. But basically, what this list says, because I'm not going through every single individual character here. Now, it's really likely that most of these are not beta characters or anything at all but probably just developers referencing themselves, because developers are known to do that sometimes. There's a bit of an easter egg to themselves, or whatever. Gary saying spank me, and the paddle. So, in the Christmas trailer for Bully, which released after Bully came out, there's an infamous scene showing Gary Smith saying spank me, which became a bit of a meme in the community. Spank me. Now, as you can probably guess, this scene never appeared anywhere at all in the game, and was later discovered to have been a part of a deleted mission known as the paddle. A mission in Chapter 4, not the third one, where Jimmy gets revenge on Damon West by stealing Dr. Crabblesnitch's paddle from his office, plants it on Damon, takes a picture of him, and then hands it back to Crabblesnitch to get Damon in trouble. Prefects holding batons. So, early character models of the prefects showed them carrying batons as part of their character model, and there does exist animations, but no models, for these batons. It heavily implies that maybe all the authority figures may have wielded them at some point, but likely cut because the idea of a child being beaten with a baton, might not have gone down too well. Or maybe it might have clashed with how the authority figures worked. I think it's 50-50 on that one. Cut mini games. So, I'm not going to go through every single cut mini game Buddy's ever had. Because I did a video on this years ago, and let's just say it takes up about half an hour of me just talking about cut activities in Bully. So, I'll keep it simple. Stuff like darts, swim racing, BMX Battle Royale style mini game, grottos and gremlins, arm punching, playing tennis, dares. You get the point. There's a hell of a lot of cut mini games from Bully, and it's all pretty depressing. Although to be fair on this one, some of them were cut because they didn't feel it fit Bully's tone, and others just couldn't make it work. And, you know, it's all part of the design process. You come up with ideas, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. You keep the ones that work, and you might reuse the ones that don't work down the line. So who knows, maybe we did get one of these cut Bully mini games in a future GTA game or whatever. Watching TV described in a review. Now, I'm not sure where the hell this one originates from, but apparently a review stated you could watch TV in any of Jimmy's safe houses, but there's no files to back this up at all. In fact, the closest you can get is turning the TV on or off in the boys' dorm, but even then, that's nothing but static. But yeah, I'm not really sure where this one originated from because I've never heard of watching TV in Bully before. Crabble Snitch's beta design used for a statue. Now, if you pay attention to any cutscenes of Dr. Crabble Snitch inside this office, you may notice a bust behind him. Now, this is actually Crabble Snitch's original appearance, minus being stone, of course, and as Data Miners discovered this model, they found this one and the final one have the same kind of texture wrapping, meaning this was Crabble Snitch's original head at some point. Now, this particular model is actually a leftover when Buddy was in its more cartoony and exaggerated phase, and it's quite reminiscent of Crabble Snitch's artwork too. Algernon has asthma. Now, it's hardly assumed that Algernon is asthmatic. I'm not sure how I need to describe that one, but he seems to suffer from a lot of breathing difficulties, as heard by various quotes. Although it could be related to weight, but it is a very nerd kind of centric trait to be suffering from asthma anyway, so who knows. Happy Vault's unused patient lines. Now, Happy Vault's Asylum had so many more patients in there. There was going to be fully occupied, there's going to be free roaming the grounds, and there's a load of audio files for them that still exist in the game. But they do go unused, as you can probably guess by now. So, here's some of them. Please don't take away my blue goose! He's my only friend! So you put one small helping of seafood in your shoes, and they put you in a madhouse! Where is the justice in that?! <laughs> Man, I've been here for 12 years! I wonder if anyone forgot about me! It's the monkey dance! It's the monkey dance! It's the wonderful monkey dance! Why did I do it? Why? This place is possessed by ghosts. I know it. Nasty ghosts. So now we enter the fourth tier. 
And is it me, or was the third tier really, really long? Anyway, starting off the fourth tier, we have the Buddy comic book. Now, Buddy has two comic books. First one is actually part of the Rare Buddy Collector's Edition, which was called Buddy Special Edition, which was actually released very close to Buddy's actual release date. I think it was announced about five days before Buddy was due out for a release anyway. And one of the additions to this Buddy Special Edition was a very short comic book, which contains a lot of early designs for characters like Jimmy, Peanut, Ernest and Russell, and shows off a bit of the beta boys norm. This comic actually seems to have increased in value over time, as I've seen it sell on eBay for about $200 a piece. It's about three pages long. Anyway, the second Buddy comic is actually part of the instruction manual. If you own a physical copy of Buddy and it has the instruction manual, just skim through it. There's a comic strip hidden in there somewhere. The RVTH Buddy Beta. So in 2018, Swegta acquired a Nintendo Wii dev kit which contained three different versions of Buddy during its development, which contained many early differences and cut content not seen on any other version of the game or inside its files, which, you know, you would expect given it's a beta build. However, somehow he ended up bricking the dev kit. I'm not sure how he did, but yeah, it ended up getting bricked. But fortunately, the Buddy beta builds were successfully archived and extracted from the console and are fully playable even on Dolphin and a few years later, they ended up getting leaked online by somebody not him. Betting on fights in the hole. So, a removed feature that let Jimmy come down to the hole, you know where Russell's boss fight arena is, and engage on betting on fights between two random students, or possibly even engage in these fights himself. There does exist a line of code for a bookie, but that's about it. This is a very kind of messy leftover, because there's only a few tiny handfuls here and there. One of the other few leftovers is a couple of quotes from NPCs, and that's about it. It doesn't even reference the minigame, just general stuff about the hole itself. One of the only other remains of this is a marker, which is actually located at the ringside table. Now this feature, believe it or not, was somewhat reworked into GTA The Ballad Gay Tony, where in that game, Luis Lopez can come down to the cage fighters in Liberty City, of course, and either partake in fights himself, or bet on others. Bullying Girls so, as you know, in Bully, you cannot hit girls because you get full red trouble meter. But a removed feature from Bully actually was going to let Jimmy bully girls alongside boys if he wanted to. Now, while it was removed, it can still be somewhat accessed by giving a wedgie to a boy and quickly then locking onto a girl. Despite the fact Jimmy just wedgied a boy, you'll still get full red meter that says bullying girls, and the girl you targeted will probably run off screaming. Likewise, there's a lot of unused audio files from all the girls after they've been shoved into lockers and being given swirlies. The dummies in the Jim is Burning use Jimmy's beta model. So, first of all, this one is actually from Complete Mayhem, not the Jim is Burning, because the Jim is Burning uses all kinds of generic crap debris. But anyway, in the Ernest Jones part of the Complete Mayhem mission, he and two other nerds are burning stuff in the gym. And once you knock him out, get the fire extinguisher and put the fire out. If you look at the dummy they're burning, does actually share a very similar shape to Jimmy Hopkins. So these next two I already did a while back so I'm just going to replay them. These two are Students Have a Trouble Meter and Kicking the Beam Cola Machine. Unlike the Grand Theft Auto series where it often feels like you're the only person with a wanted level, all non-authority figures in body actually have a trouble meter of their own. And this can be seen quite easily if two students fight in front of a prefect or a cop, they'll run away while being chased by said authority figure. All NPCs also have a trouble meter for trespassing. For example, if a male NPC is caught in the girl's dorm, they'll be caught by Miss Peabody. If any NPC is caught in the asylum or out after curfew, they'll also be chased by prefects or police. This is easiest to do in Chapter 1, but if Jimmy somehow loses all of his money and goes to a beam cola machine, Jimmy will need the machine in a vain attempt to get a free drink. Now the player won't actually be told they can do this, but if you spend all your money and go to a vending machine, press the interact button and Jimmy will knee it instead. Sometimes a free can will actually pop out. This will stop to work however once the player has unlocked free beam cola by buying 100 cans. Bully Multiplayer so, in 2018, a multiplayer mod for Buddy Scholarship Edition on PC was released after many, many years of development. However, unfortunately, it seemed to die off pretty quickly, as not even one year later, the player base was already near non-existent. The mod is still up today, so there might be hope that maybe a community can make it thrive properly, but... Yeah, it really didn't go anywhere. Picking Classes So, originally, Jimmy had two classes available at the same time, and could choose which one he wanted to attend, instead of waiting for every other day to pass for the class he wants to attend to show up, as shown by some early screenshots, which at the time people thought might have been a bit of a bug, but no, it turns out it's fully intentional. 
the Game Dude. So inside the nerd safe face, Jimmy can find a games console called the Game Dude, which is an obvious parody of the Game Boy. But if you get a camera and zoom in on this Game Dude, you'll see it actually has a picture of Buddy during its pre-development stage on it. Scrubbing Graffiti. So this is a removed detention minigame which has quite a lot of leftover files. Instead of just lawn mowing, Jimmy might have had to clean up graffiti alongside it. There's leftover scenes for a scrub brush, the detention locations, and even Seth's audio files. The detention would have taken place around both academies outside, Bullworth Town, and even New Coventry. The Class Presidency. So during the first chapter of Buddy, you can see various posters of Ted Thompson, the jock leader, and Ernest Jones, the nerd leader, both running for class president. And towards the end of chapter one, Jimmy partakes in the story a little bit by protecting Ernest during his speech. But the very second that mission ends, the entire election storyline thing is gone. It just ends there and then, and it's never ever brought up again. It's never even mentioned during Ernest's chapter, which has actually kind of frustrated a lot of players because you would actually think like it would be a good kind of revenge plot for Ernest, you know, revenge for losing the election, revenge for being bullied and whatnot, but yeah. It rendered the entire thing a complete waste of time and you could remove the candidate from chapter 1 or whatever and it would have no impact on the story whatsoever. Boxing minigame bloodier faces. So once again during the beta, the boxing opponents Jimmy fights in the boxing minigame were going to have much more bloodier faces than they do in the final version. It was likely toned down to calm concerns about Buddy being a bit too violent. So we've arrived at the 5th tier and to start us off we've got when does Buddy take place? So. Unlike the Grand Theft Auto series, where pretty much every single game tells you when and where it's set, Buddy's time period is left completely ambiguous, with some saying it takes place in the 1970s, the 80s, the 90s, and of course, at the time, modern day, the early to mid 2000s. Now the reason behind this is because it's a design choice, because Rockstar wanted players of all ages to enjoy and find a way to relate to Buddy. So by not specifying the time period, older players could enjoy Buddy because they could feel nostalgic about their own school years. Likewise, younger players who would likely be in school could play Buddy and maybe see a bit of their own school life being represented in a game. Now keeping Buddy's time period ambiguous was done in multiple ways by having the soundtrack having many tracks based off the 1950s all the way to the early 2000s, as well as the props you find around the map being completely timeless. You have stuff like Commodores, but then you also have stuff like laptops. Now while obviously some of these give Buddy more of a modern day or older day kind of vibe, like you know for example a laptop would be something you find in the early 2000s, it's only ever seen in one place, so you can completely miss this. Same for the Commodore, you have to actually look at it in the library, it's not something that jumps straight out at you. Oh and if you're wondering when Buddy really takes place, according to an in-game texture, it's 2005. The unused drowning animation. So once again during development Jimmy could have drowned while swimming. Now this was removed entirely and you can't drain it all in the final game because even if you get knocked out in the water it instantly cuts to a black screen, there's no animation that plays or whatever. Likewise it's impossible for Jimmy to knock anybody out in the water anyway. Even if they're on really low health, if you hit somebody with low health in water, their health just comes back until they're back on land. This was likely done because, well, considering the controversy Buddy generated before it even came out, draining people might have given Jack Thompson a bit more ammunition to try and get it banned. The Brady Games Strategy Guide So Brady Games are best known for publishing all kinds of ultra in-depth walkthroughs and guides for all kinds of games. You know, Grand Theft Auto, Pokemon, whatever, you get the idea. And in their Buddy one, it's kind of unique in a way because despite being a guide for the PS2 game, it has a hell of a lot of cut content and beta screenshots inside of it, including the early HUD, mission changes, listing unlockables that don't even exist. And considering this guide was made before Buddy's release and published straight after, it really shows how much of it was changed in such a short time. Bonus fact about this one is even in their scholarship edition guide, which you know scholarship edition came out two years after the original, it has a lot of cut content inside of that one as well, like mentioning gifts for dogs, t-bone steaks for example, and alternative methods for unlocking stuff that doesn't even exist, like the werewolf mask, which can only be unlocked by picking lockers, but in this guide it says that you can unlock it by beating all nighttime errands and the uh, underwear over trousers thing which doesn't even exist at all because it was removed. So yeah, the Brady Game strategy guide seems to have been made on a beta build of the game. Stealing money from knocked out people. So you know how in Grand Theft Auto when you kill people they just drop money and you can just walk over and pick it up? Well that was going to be in Buddy as well. The only remains of this are some of Jimmy's dialogue and some models. Mr Hattrick not fired after cheating time. So much like Mr Burton after Final Showdown, Mr Hattrick gets fired by Crabble Snitch. However, he will still be teaching math class and still be occasionally found roaming the school grounds. 
winning consumo. So when you play the nerd challenge, you know you have to play the consumo mini game. And pretty much everybody in the community agrees that consumo is not really a fan favorite. As you may know, consumo style is very endless. Like you just have to keep eating and eating and eating until you run out of lives. But in the game's files, there's an audio file for winning the game. Now, as you can probably guess, this is either completely deleted or the score is so high that nobody has legitimately reached it yet. I think it's more than likely cut content because Consumo style of gameplay is the typical endless arcade style of game anyway, so it makes no sense to put in like a winning scenario. Gary Smith's Remove Swastika So in Halloween, Gary Smith dresses up in an SS officer costume, and for a while people theorised if Gary Smith might have had a Nazi swastika on his costume at some point. And for a while, it was nothing more than either a beta rumour or just people theorising, because there was no evidence whatsoever to back it up, because there were no images or pre release material or anything really, nor did it appear on any of the beta Wii builds. So it was brushed off as complete and utter nonsense. However, it was discovered in the Buddy Brady Games Guide on the PS2 that one of the screenshots featured for the Halloween cutscene clearly shows a red armband on Gary's arm. And if you know anything about it, Nazis always wore red armbands on their arm anyway, and this has been the closest proof that Gary Smith was likely going to have a Nazi swastika on his costume. The Christmas Gifts So once again, it's another bit of cut content, I swear this is becoming more like the buddy cut content iceberg at this point, but yeah, when Christmas rolls around and hits Bullworth, there's an entirely deleted mini side quest kind of thing, when on Christmas Day, when Jimmy wakes up in the dorm, he'll overhear Justin, Pedro and Trevor discussing something. Now here, Justin would mention that Harrington House has scattered Christmas gifts for students all over town, and it's hardly assumed that this was going to be another limited edition side collectible kind of thing by Pumpkins and Tombstones were for Halloween, where Jimmy had either until the end of the season, maybe until the end of Christmas Day, or maybe, which I do think is unlikely, the presents would stay in their place. I think that one's probably the most unlikely one. But yeah, there's also a chance that if they did stay in the game, they might have been moved to a completely different location, you know, like the tombstones and the pumpkins were after Halloween, to avoid locking players out of 100% completion. But even then, it's not known how many presents, or even what the rewards were. The first person mode. So first person mode was a mod released in 2019, and does what it says on the tin. It lets you experience most of the game in first person mode, like you can in GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2. It's a pretty good mod, but with some very stiff turning. But other than that, it's a pretty unique way to play Buddy. The new Coventry Police Station uses pizza parlour audio. So the police station in New Coventry was supposed to be a pizza parlour, and this is shown by so many early renders of the building and the fact the in-game audio file for the location lists this place as a pizza parlour. Another leftover of this is a quote by Cornelius during the mission wrong part of town when he's being harassed by Johnny and Gary. It's probably changed to give every single area in the game its own police station for whatever reason. Johnny Vincent's ending dialogue in Bait. So the mission Bait has two different endings, both having different dialogue, and that's about it, there's no kind of like different reward or anything, which has confused many players for many years. Because when you beat the mission, normally Johnny Vincent says this. Ah, oh, I got some of that burning hatred out of my system. Here's your cash, now scram. But on very rare occasions, he might actually say this instead. Thanks, Jimmy, you're a good kid, you know. Here's your money, see you around. Now, as it turns out, this is triggered by letting Johnny knock Gord out himself. Because if you let Johnny Vincent knock Gord out, you'll get the happy Johnny ending. If you knock Gord out, you get the angry Johnny ending. The reason this is rare is because it's a bit of a mix between the greasers having the worst aim known to mankind in this mission, mixed with the fact the mission kind of implies you have to do everything yourself anyway. Plus, it's also much quicker to do so. So now we arrive at the sixth and final tier. And starting us off is the Bullworth Stalker ARG. So, in 2019, somebody attempted to start up an ARG around Buddy, and it started off by uploading supposed leaked music of Buddy 2, and it was posted under an account named Buddy 2 OSTs, with two S's at the end. However, people were very quick to point out that most of the music from Buddy 2 was in fact very easily traceable, and not a part of Buddy 2 at all. Then sometime down the line, the account posted a video called Bullworth News, which was just the intro to Drama Alert from Keemstar. But during the video, it had a bit of an abrupt cut, and then started playing this very low quality, creepy kind of video, which was full of all kinds of images. Some of them were like jump scares and gore, in a way, and it's just like a flurry of them, in like this weird kind of monochrome, colour, distorted kind of thing. I don't know how to describe it. Then towards the end of the video, a pastebin link flashed up for a quick second, and it had a list of all the buddy characters listed as dead or alive, and a link to a Twitter account named Bullworth Peter. 
The ARG was basically covering some serial killer at Bullworth. The account was active for a few months afterwards because it continued to upload this kind of content, but um, did get called out because it apparently was stealing content from the likes of uh, Ben's Playhouse and channels like 2H32. It was just re-uploading them, no edits done whatsoever, just with a different title. Maybe their own jump scare or something like that included, but um, yeah. However, since April 2019, absolutely nothing has happened with this ARG at all. And given the fact it's been nearly five years at this point, fucking hell, I hate realising 2019 was nearly half a decade ago already. Uh, what was I saying? Um, oh yeah. Anyway, given how it's been nearly five years at this point since any activity occurred with this ARG, it's safe to say that this ARG is pretty much dead in the water. The Mysterious Cheat Code So, another thing that happened for the Buddy community in 2019 was there was a brand new cheat code discovered in the PlayStation versions of Buddy, where if you hold down L1 and press down on the D-pad four times on a secondary controller, you get the message cheat activated popping up. But the thing is, nobody knew what the hell this cheat code even was. There was no notable effect on it or anything, leaving people to wonder if there was an effect but we had to find it, because, as you know, sometimes cheats change something in the game but it's not right away, or if it was part of a removed feature that might have given Jimmy something like infinite sprinting before he was given that by default, which is a possibility because if you play GTA, you know that the protagonists don't have infinite ammo. I mean, infinite sprinting, sorry. But Jimmy, for some reason, starts off with infinite sprinting, like he never tires out at all, so you can kind of see why people thought it might have been a removed sprinting code. But anyway, a year later in 2020, Twitter user Ednus Tweets did some digging and found the entire cheat code was actually really bugged. It was supposed to be an all items cheat. And when I say all items, I don't just mean all weapons, but I mean all items, because it was even supposed to give Jimmy mission specific items like Beatrice's diary and the orderly uniform, alongside every single weapon in the game. And that even includes stuff like the flashlight and the super spud gun we mentioned earlier. Now apparently the cheat bugs out because it skips over the part where Jimmy's supposed to get the actual items. And it is fixable by a game shot code which apparently can be used on all versions of the game, so that includes the European, American and Japanese versions. The Hair Growth Tonics at the Barber Shop So much like the world of Grand Theft Auto, the barbers in Bullworth have some kind of magical hair growth tonics. Because as we know, Jimmy's a bit of a skinhead. But yet one visits the barbers and Jimmy leaves with a nice full set of hair. This was also a part of the Discreet Deliveries mission where Jimmy actually gives this tonic to balding men around Bullworth. However, it doesn't seem to work on them as it does with Jimmy. The next one is test maps. So one of the things that many developers do during game development is they have a test map. Now test maps are never meant to be seen by players because they're just meant to be for developers and they're just used to basically test stuff out. Now depending on what game it is, it can vary. Like for example, if you play Super Mario, you're gonna find a lot of platformers, maybe a room full of enemies, whatever, you know. Now in Buddy's case, they have two of them. Now the first one is just like Flatland, it's full of these kind of like big, rooms, I don't know how to describe them, where a lot of the test scripts take place. Around this map as well you see stuff like shooting areas, and some people actually do consider this to be a really creepy area, because these rooms, even on the Wii debug build, many of the test scripts take place in one specific room only, while all the other rooms go entirely unused, and many people point out that this area kind of feels a bit eerie in a way. You can kind of see why it is a bit creepy for some people, like some of these rooms do look like they come straight from Manhunt. Now thankfully, the second test map is a bit more lighter, because I'm sure the second test map is only used for testing stuff like props, because there's a massive area that's just full of every single prop in the game, alongside a few ramps, and um, well, for some reason they've also got an untextured entire skate park, which never exists anywhere else in the game. Which actually might coincide with the BMX trucks we mentioned earlier. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if this was used to test them out. But yeah, you can still skate and bike around this even if you can't do any tricks, and it does feel like it belongs in Tony Hawk to be honest. But yeah, that's a very brief overview of both of the test maps. The Remove Missions Now Bully, as you can probably guess from this iceberg, and if you've watched this video up until this point, I don't need to say it, but you can probably guess Bully has had quite a bit of content cut from it, and missions are no exception. So rather than go through every single mission that's been cut from Buddy, I'm going to go over a couple of the more fleshed out ones that have a bit of info about them. First one is Rendezvous, which is a mission in Chapter 3 where Jimmy meets Lola, she flirts with him and tries to coax him into protecting Tad Spencer from the Greasers. The Paddle. Now I mentioned that one earlier, so I'm not covering it again. The Motel Mission. Now this is a very incomplete mission which can still be played, but it crashes after the first objective, which is just to beat up a few Greasers. But going through the script of the mission, which still exists, 
It heavily implies that Jimmy might have had a big run in with a bull with police after this. Off Road Romance, a mission from Chapter 4, which was found in the beta Wii builds of the game, but has absolutely zero content inside of it. Like, once it loads, there's no objectives or sounds or anything. Frankie Bushwitz. So, during development, Jimmy had the option to buy custom music and listen to it on an MP3 player before Buddy was given a full background track. Now, while all of this was removed, including the music store itself, there exists a very brief description mentioning one of the tracks that Jimmy could buy, which was named Frankie Bushwitz Rockin' Polka Party. Now, Frankie Bushwitz appears to be a character made up entirely for Bully, much like GTA's in-universe musicians Love Fist and Connor and Jay, you know from like GTA 3 and Vice City. But there's no audio with this Frankie Bushwitz anywhere to be found. It's unknown if this was going to be composed by Rockstar in studio, which is likely, or maybe Sean Lee would have done something under this kind of alias. I don't know. And we end the iceberg with Graveyard 02.wav. Now this is a really creepy audio file. I'll let this one play for itself. And so with that, we've reached the bottom of the second Buddy Iceberg. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for mostly Buddy-based content and that. So yeah, thank you for watching this video, if you did. And have a great day, I guess.